Welcome to Red and Blue. I'm Scott McFarland in Washington on a very busy day. We thank you for joining us. And we begin tonight with a major victory for Democrats in Georgia. CBS News projects Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock will win in the state's high stakes runoff election there. It means the 2022 midterms are finally over. And the makeup of next year's Congress is finally official. In that final contest last night, incumbent Democrat Warnock beat his Republican challenger Herschel Walker by several thousand votes. Democrats will now have 51 seats in the Senate come January. And lawmakers are now shifting their focus to a number of other priorities, including passing a bill to fund the government and the annual defense authorization bill. For more on this and more, Rebecca Kaplan and Nicole Killian join us now. Rebecca is CBS News Capitol Hill producer. And Nicole is my colleague, CBS News congressional correspondent, who's in Atlanta still for us covering that runoff election. Nicole, let's start in Atlanta. From all you saw over these past few days and from yesterday, what's your big takeaway from what happened yesterday and last night? Well, I think the big takeaway is the diversification of this state and how it has really made it a very competitive uh, battleground. You know, Georgia has typically been more of a red state, and uh, certainly uh, we have seen uh, a lot of uh, Republican support, for instance, in the general for someone like uh, Governor Brian Kemp. But then you look at what happened last night with uh, Senator Raphael Warnock winning by a significant margin over his Republican rival, Herschel Walker. And it really kind of shows you the extent to which uh, Georgia has become a swing state to a certain extent and how it has become, uh, to some, uh, the center now of uh, the political universe. So I think that is certainly one main takeaway uh, from the election. But uh, certainly we know that Senator Warnock uh, returned to Capitol Hill uh, earlier today, uh, looking a lot more relieved <laughs> now that he's back in his day job, this time for a full term of six years. Even before Senator Warnock returned here, Senator Chuck Schumer, the majority leader, was having a bit of a victory parade. Let's listen to what Senator Schumer said just this morning. They say all good things come to those who wait, and this outcome is absolutely worth the wait. After one year, 10 months, and 17 days of the longest 50-50 Senate in history, 51, yeah. a slim majority. That is great, and we are so happy about it. Nicole, you, Rebecca, and I have been talking a lot about this, but let's explain, Nicole, the difference between a 51-49 Democratic majority and a 50-50. What does that mean in the months ahead? Well, I think there are small differences and big differences. You know, big picture, is this going to allow things to get done more easily or smoothly on Capitol Hill? Uh, probably not, but it does give Democrats just a bit more leverage when it comes to committees, uh, when it comes to judicial nominations, being able to get those through uh, more uh, quickly and easily. But as far as, uh, you know, big ticket legislation, uh, Democrats are still going to have to work across the aisle and make sure that they get the support of their Republican colleagues. You know, we always talked about that magic number 10, that Democrats uh, needed 10 Republicans uh, in this currently uh, divided 50-50 Senate. Well, now uh, that margin will be just a hair smaller at nine, but that still means that they're going to have to uh, do a lot of uh, extending of the olive olive branch, uh, if you will, to get that Republican cooperation, which is something that Leader Schumer has already started talking about. That's the next Congress. Let's talk about the current Congress, Rebecca. 26 days left and an awful lot still to do. There was supposed to be this afternoon this debate potentially setting the table for votes on this military authorization bill, but that got held up. That's held up at the moment, uh, Scott. And one thing we're not exactly sure of is how this is going to resolve. But we should actually look back to the fact that it actually took quite a bit of effort just to get here to an agreement on the overall National Defense Authorization Act. One critical thing that conservatives had been pushing for, for was a removal of the vaccine mandate for the military. This is actually something that was opposed by the Biden administration and the top brass at the DOD, but ultimately clearly was something that Democrats on the Hill felt that they had to use as a negotiating tool to get enough 
enough Republicans on the bill to move this forward. The other option would have been punting the NDAA to the next Congress when Republicans will control the House and would have a lot more control over policy and what that looks like in general. Uh, what we're waiting for at this hour, if we can get a little technical here for a minute, this bill was supposed to start moving through the machinery of passing the House, going to the Rules Committee, going to the floor for a procedural vote and then a final vote. And we're actually seeing it held up in the Rules Committee now. There's some discussions that there may be some asks from the Congressional Black Caucus trying to include some other legislative priorities. They are meeting at this hour, so we are waiting to see what comes out of that meeting and if it changes the outlook for the bill on the Hill going forward. But this is one of those year-end must-pass items that they really do have to get done. Late today, we were speaking with Senate Republicans, including Senator Rick Scott of Florida, Senator Mike Lee of Utah, who were celebrating the removal of that vaccine mandate from this military bill, calling it a victory, seemingly making it more palatable for Republicans. Mitch McConnell announced his support for it today. It, it, the holdup, Rebecca, seems to be right now, at least today, in the Democratic caucus in the House. That's where we're seeing it at the moment. And part of the reason it was so critical to get this Republican support on board was because of the fact that this isn't going to pass with Democratic votes alone, even though Democrats control the House and the Senate. There are always a number of Democrats who vote against the National Defense Authorization Act, principally from the progressive wing of the party, because they want to see more defense, sorry, more domestic spending and less defense spending. So that's always tough when it gets to a bill that is really all about defense spending. They want more domestic priorities. So you always are going to need a subset of Republicans to offset the loss of Democratic votes there. Uh, but now it, we are waiting to see if there's even going to be enough Democratic votes on board to get this through the House, because it's going to be a coalition of Democrats and Republicans. And even though, yes, Republicans and conservatives are happy about the end of the vaccine mandate being included in this bill, there are still a lot who are going to vote no anyway. Some wanted the vaccine mandate removal to go further. They wanted back pay for soldiers who were discharged because they refused to take the vaccine. So there are definitely going to be some Republicans who vote no no matter what some Democrats who vote no, no matter what. So it's all about threading that needle here. Yeah, I think that's, that, that's a great point. And I'll also note the senators who were celebrating the removal of the vaccine mandate were couching their, 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 their approval with some concerns that it didn't go far enough. Senator Mike Braun today said Republicans were clearly caught flat-footed and remain flat-footed when it comes to campaigning for the Senate. Nicole, what's your sense of what Raphael Warnock has planned now that he gets this job for six years and doesn't have to run another four times for it over the next six years? Well, you know, that will be contingent in part on Democrats' agenda, which Leader Schumer didn't necessarily want to get into today. But Senator Warnock has said that he wants to continue to work on a lot of the issues that he has to date, whether that is the issue of health care and getting the cap on those insulin prices or whether it is uh, dealing with the issue of manufacturing. Uh, you know, those are some of the issues that he wants to get a better handle on and to be able to do more, not only for the state, but also for the country. And he also said that he is really anxious to work across the aisle, uh, you know, that he is not here in the Senate uh, simply to, uh, you know, do Rep Democrats' uh, agenda strictly, and uh, that he wants to be able to partner uh, with his Republican colleagues as well. That is something he spent a lot of time on the trail talking about, uh, including working across the aisle with someone like, for instance, a Senator Ted Cruz. So he says he does want to do more of that type of work uh, going forward. And I think, you know, at this point, uh, he can kind of breathe uh, a bit of a sigh of relief. He has talked about having to run uh, at least five different times now for this position, but now that the seat is secure for the the next uh, six years, uh, he can kind of take a little breather, although there is already talk now of whether there could be more in his political future, given uh, what he was able to pull off last night. Nicole Killian in Atlanta, Rebecca Kaplan in Washington, where it's raining in both cities. Uh, nice to see you both. Thank you both for your reporting.